All right. Michael Malley, you're well known for your acting roles on so many projects over the years. Uh, but last year you added yet another check mark to your resume, and that is as the creator of the new comedy series Survivor's Remorse on Stars. Um, tell us, how did this idea come about? Well, uh, Tom Warner, who I had written a project uh, for uh, over at Warner Brothers a couple years ago, he uh, is also known not only for producing great television shows, but as one of the ownership group of the Boston Red Sox. Uh, the Boston Red Sox Fenway Sports Group got invested in LeBron James's marketing company, and LeBron for a show uh, based on what it's like to grow up poor, suddenly make it uh, big in the basketball world and start to have some success and have money and how you navigate those pitfalls and uh, opportunities uh, once you start to have money. What that What is that like for you? What is that like for your family? What is it like for your friends and the people that you're close to? And that was where the premise of the show came from. And then I went off and created a world and characters and, and that's where Survivor's Remorse came from. And you know, there's the old saying to write what you know, and there's a huge amount of detail and passion with this project. So I'm assuming you're a big basketball fan. Is that, is that right? Well, uh, I, I am a big basketball fan. I'm, I'm a bigger baseball and football fan. Uh, and uh, the professional basketball world is not something that I followed as closely. But what I was really interested in is the family aspect of this. So in terms of the show, uh, it's funny. You say, you know, write what you know, and people might say, well, you know, I mean, you're a guy from New Hampshire and it doesn't look like you can dunk a basketball. How are you writing a show about this? Which I understand that. Uh, but, you know, I came from a big family and uh, I come from a big family and family and friends are very, very important to me in my life. I mean, I know they're important to most people, but I think that what happens when somebody becomes famous and successful and the success and the opportunities that are provided for the people around those people, uh, when those binds are, or those ties, I should say, are the ties that bind those people are blood ties, um, it can really impact people in a, in a, in a very profound way. And so... Cam, who grew up poor in Boston, who's the you know the lead basketball player in the in this show, uh, he has a huge huge heart, and he wants to really continue to help people. You know, people say, "Why do you call it Survivor's Remorse?" The title came from Maverick Carter when he heard this phrase, this idea that somebody goes through a traumatic experience, they survive, other people perish, they don't know why they survived and the other people perished and they carry with them a burden. And I do think that for a lot of people who make a ton of money in the professional athlete world, uh, who come from poverty, there's no shortage of people that they can continue to help and really change their lives uh, with opportunity, with access, with association, with investment in ideas, with bailing people out of trouble, big trouble, financial trouble, debt. Uh, and I just thought it was a really, really rich, rich area. And, you know, I'm, I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm a brother. I'm a cousin. I'm a friend. Uh, so those relationships are very, very important to me. And I think that I began to try to, you know, put myself in the shoes of this character and all of the characters and think, okay, how would my life be affected like this uh, if, if I was in this situation? I'm always curious to talk to writers and creators and find out how long was it from the moment you wrote the pilot to the moment it finally aired on TV as a finished product? Are we talking months or maybe years? Um, I think that I, in, in, Opening day of the baseball season 2013 was when Tom talked to me about this idea that Maverick and I had and would I be interested in doing that. I then, I was still working on Shameless as a writer and I was acting on Glee. And then I was cast in a show on NBC called Welcome to the Family. So I was juggling a lot of different things at once. I wrote 
the treatment in late June of 2013. And then I wrote, I delivered the first episode script or the pilot script in November. And then we were shooting it in March, hmm. May, May. Probably sometime between, yeah, we were, we were prepping it and shooting it like around March, and but they picked it up for six episodes, which was great, right? They didn't right. pick up one. Uh, so it was less than a year, which was great. And then how did LeBron James get involved in Survivor's Remorse? Um, so LeBron James and three of his friends from uh, when he grew up, um, Rich and Randy and Maverick, uh, they started a marketing company. And one of the things in their marketing company in Spring Hill Productions, which is another company that they have, uh, was to get involved with television and film production. And uh, Maverick Carter, who is one of the big you know brains behind uh, this project, he and and LeBron, this was just one of the projects that they came up with, and they you know said, "Hey, here's an idea. This is something to develop. Let's find someone to create the show for us." And you know, they came to me, but I mean, obviously, you know, LeBron's full-time job is playing professional basketball. He's not out you know, meeting. Yeah, he's kind of busy. I was like, yeah, he's, but, um, but he actually is doing a new movie with Amy Schumer, a Judd Apatow movie that's supposed to be fantastic. And when we finished writing the script, uh, I flew down to Miami and uh, LeBron and his friends read the script out loud and LeBron read the character of Cam. It was great. Uh, it was great to see. It's great, obviously, to have that background and authenticity that LeBron has to bring to the show, to be able to say, hey, yeah, this is something that might happen. This is another situation that might happen. But we, we were very sure to try to make this a very fictional world and a fake world so somebody wouldn't say, oh, is this the story of LeBron James? It was more about just exploring this family with the – uh, world of professional basketball as a backdrop to that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned we had six episodes in season one, so it's just a small little taste of Cam's world. Uh, season two will be a little longer, right, from what we're being told? Ten episodes, yes. We just finished shooting the tenth episode in Atlanta, and actually we're waiting for LeBron to finish the NBA Finals, and then we're going to shoot him in an episode that he's already in the story. Uh, it doesn't parallel what's happening in the real world. It's just he's a character in the show. Uh, but we're hoping that, you know, he wins the NBA Finals and is, you know, just excited about doing our episode, which would actually probably be a come down from winning the NBA Finals. <laughs> and so far, you've resisted the urge to guest star on your own show. Um, might you be popping up in season two or beyond? I hope so. Uh, you know, I was... Uh, I was thinking about maybe playing uh, Chris Bauer, who plays Jimmy Flaherty, the owner of the team. I was thinking about coming in, and it's his idiot brother, uh, playing the idiot brother is something I excel at. So I think that uh, hopefully I'll write myself a part in there. You know, I'm, I've been around the block a little while, so I know that if you're going to write yourself a part, make sure it's some, somebody who can recur. Yeah. You're also a really good villain, so if, if there's any oh, villain, villain roles coming up. Yeah, I want to do that again. You know, after I play that villain on Justified, it's like I uh, – what can I say? It's fun to shoot people in the head when it's <laughs> – Yeah. Uh, I have to say my favorite laugh-out-loud moment from Survivor's Remorse, it was in the church when the priest outed all of the gay people in the congregation. Yeah. And our core group of, of family of, of characters, they went crazy. They really let him have it. It was so funny, so memorable. Uh, tell us about that scene. Well, what happens is that in for your uh, viewers who are watching this and haven't seen the show, the episode is about the family wants to get back and be, um, you know, thankful and grateful for some of their the good things that have happened to them. And that's one of the things that happens in our show is that our lead character has an incredible amount of gratitude for the good fortune that's come his way. And one of the things that you see professional athletes and especially politicians, once they move to a new town, they got to find a church. And yet they're very open and accepting about their sisters being a lesbian. They're proud of her. They're proud of who she is. They don't shy away from it. They don't judge her for it. And when they go to see a new 
church and the church, they really connect with the pastor and they think that the, the pastor is really making sense of scripture for them. Uh, the pastor asks the sister, M. Chuck, to tone down, you know, the affection that she's displaying toward her date at church. And, you know, her mother says, look, you know, church is not the time to be pawing at somebody. It's the time to sort of sit in reverence and listen to scripture. But the sister is very defensive about it. And she feels like if, you know, she was heterosexual and she had her arm around her boyfriend or her husband, no one would have any issue with it. And so Cam goes and speaks to the uh, the pastor and, you know, promises him a little bit of a donation to be a little bit more forward thinking in his church. And the pastor realizes that if he ridicules this professional athlete, he'll make more money because there are plenty of people out there who will pat him on the back and celebrate him for uh, preventing moral decay from happening in his church. And I, I, of course, think that that behavior is reprehensible. And so the family, um, but the family also, the lesson that they learn there is that why would you even want to be in a church or bribe someone uh, to have you in a church that judges who you are, what your sexual preference is, um, that to make the mistake of trying to bribe somebody is um is something that could backfire on you because you're not doing it legit rather than just saying, okay, you know what? This guy is not the man that I want to associate with because he's someone who excludes people from uh, worship instead of accepts them into it. And so we just thought that we would find a way in that episode to show the hypocrisy of uh, how so many people in the modern age try to just stake their place in the world by being contrarian. Uh, that's certainly what the pastor does in this point. And this show is a fantastic mix of new performers and, and well-known stars like Tashina Arnold, Mike that, Epps. Yeah. We're so Were you involved in the casting at all? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, I was heavily involved in the casting as the showrunner. You have to really put your foot down if you think that an actor isn't right for a part, but you also have to go out and really recruit people that you think are great. Uh, we were very, very lucky. Uh, my cousin Brendan, who's a writer on the show, um, he's an, also an actor. He had recommended when he first read the script, Ron Rico Lee, who plays Reggie. Uh, we had a long and wide search for Jesse Usher, who's the lead actor, uh, the, the basketball player. And, um, and now he's playing uh, Will Smith's son in the new Independence Day sequel. We're so happy and proud to have uh, found him in this part because he's really a terrific actor. Erica Ash, who plays M. Chuck, also another actress who's just so amazing at being able to balance drama and comedy and uh, just, just a really wonderful, nuanced, deep actor. Uh, Tashina Arnold, who is... I think just going to absolutely explode in season two. She has some fantastic storylines. She has an incredible amount of heart that I think is displayed and just her comedy chops are excellent. Mike Epps, who is singular in his delivery and is a, you know, massive star and a real guy who just by him being in our show really confers a, a legit comedy background on us that, uh, few performers can do. And then Tiana Paris, who uh, um, just is amazing. You know, you saw her in Mad Men and Dear White People. And she is just this Juilliard trained, uh, authentic, wonderfully graceful actress who also is showing her comedy chops this year and has a great storyline that, that we're pushing at the beginning of the season. So these actors are just amazing and mm, yeah. they bring together this kind of relationship and this you know the alchemy that occurs when you really want a successful show to kind of take off is when the actors take the material and they lift it off the page and really feel as if they're real and their affection and their love for one another is something that is uh, genuine and it's sort of extraordinary to witness as a writer because they fill in so much of the detail for what you need in actors 
Hey, are you able to pinpoint like one moment or scene from season one where you were just so proud of it, where you thought we got it right? Hmm. Um, well, I love the scene at the end of episode two when, you know, this whole issue of how is Cam disciplined as a kid and his mother is made to essentially have this walk of public shame for saying that she uh, disciplined her kid by hitting him with a Hot Wheels track. Uh, we came up with a moment at the end of the episode where, and people are debating whether or not it's right or wrong to hit kids with a, with a belt or a hand or a spoon or an extension cord. And some people would think, well, yes, I mean, it's absolutely wrong. And then other people would say, look, I, I messed up. I didn't pay attention to my parents until they started hitting me. I personally think it's horrible. I understand that sometimes children get you to the point where you just want to throttle them, but you've got to, you know, hold back from that. Uh, and I think at the end of episode two, where we showed two grown men in full sweatsuits whipping each other and hitting each other with Hot Wheels track and it was hurting them, I think uh, that said everything. Because if you're a little kid and you're getting hit with a Hot Wheels track, um, you can only imagine how much it hurts if you see two grown men sword fighting with these things and really hurting each other. They're laughing about how much it hurts. And that's all the commentary you need on whether or not it's right or wrong. And we're an awards website here at Gold Derby. I'd love to get your thoughts on, you know, when you were nominated for for Glee and in, in the guest actor category. What do you remember? That was that was 2010, right? What do you remember from that whole Emmys experience? Uh, I remember going to IHOP with my children and mm -hmm. uh, celebrating because the Emmy nomination happened. I didn't expect it. I think that. Uh, you know, to be to be singled out for a performance, and as an actor, you're so reliant on great writing. And Glee at that time was, you know, really just in the middle of the cultural conversation about what was happening, certainly on television. It was really kind of an extraordinary moment and I think everybody's lives who was associated with Glee. And so I think there was just an incredible amount of joy and gratitude for being able to be a, on a show where you're being recognized for your work. I think that I think that everyone who pursues this business as an actor, they believe when they first go into it, and if you go into it after you know you get out of college or you get out of high school, you believe that you have the ability or you have something to offer or you believe that you're talented enough to help tell stories in an authentic and real way. And it can be very uh, frustrating, even though you've been forewarned about how difficult it is to not have those opportunities. And as you get older, you see opportunities go to other people and you see things that you hope that you would be a part of uh, kind of pass you by. Uh, when you're a little bit older, as I was in, as far as I was about 43 years old when that happened for me, I was, I had been around long enough to really uh, be able to kind of cherish what that recognition meant because the first thing that happens is that when you get that kind of nod um, it just people are paying attention to it and then it just helps other work happen um, hey you got an Emmy you know that's a big thing it's just like it helps you get other work and that's always the struggle is can you be seen uh, for a dramatic role when you want to do a dramatic role and can you be seen for a bigger part and if you're on a sh television show that's successful uh, that will lead to other parts and other television shows it'll also lead to other opportunities and on stage and it'll lead to other opportunities on screen in films uh, so it's huge so I just remember just being so grateful um, and that was, and I, I love playing that part, you know, so I loved playing Bert on Glee and I loved working with, you know, most of my scenes were with Chris Kofer or Matt Morrison or Corey Monteith and they were just all great guys. Um, you know, Neil Patrick Harris is great, but I was really rooting for you that year. I think, uh, I think Thanks. you deserved it. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, Neil was very uh, generous in his um, acceptance speech to uh, give me a you know a, a shout out. And a, again, I, I, I look. I am just so happy that I'm able to work as an actor, and I've been able to work as an actor for a long time. And so, getting a nomination is certainly uh, it's it's not it's insignificant, but the most significant thing is being able to work as an actor. That's the biggest thing, and something I have incredible gratitude for. Certainly, Neil was amazing in his performance in that episode, and you know he's you know it, just what he's done with his career is just unbelievable. And I also wanted to ask, uh, you know, Glee ended and Justified ended within, really within weeks of each other. Oh, no. And these are two shows you were a part of. What was it like saying goodbye to both of these shows essentially at the same time? Well, Glee was a very uh, emotional goodbye because I think that everyone recognized that we had been a part of something that was uh, bigger than just doing a show. Uh, there was also, I think that there, the audience for Glee has an incredible emotional attachment to, to some of the stories and to the people that are portrayed in that show and they have a real emotional attachment to them. And so you recognize when you went to work, uh, the, not the pressure, but, but just what your work was endowed with kind of a deeper meaning for some people. That doesn't always happen. You, you kind of have a relationship with your work. You go to do your work and you're happy to, make a great episode of television and just to be doing the work. But on Glee, there was something else that was happening, it, certainly from my storylines and, and how that, the character of Bert, the character of Kurt, uh, how those people were received by the audience that watched Glee. I'm not talking about like everybody in the country loved Glee. Certainly there were plenty of people who didn't. But for the people, but that doesn't matter. You just need to find enough people who love your show to keep doing it. And uh, people had an incredible emotional attachment, and you have to honor that. Um, so that was big. And then, you know, Justified, what was great about working on Justified is that I, I was always hoping I would come back. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't turn my phone off. <laughs> but um, I, um, you know, on Justified, that was another great part to be able to play Nikki Augustine. You know, for me, who was just a very blunt, uh, foul mouth, horrible character, but had a real strong point of view. And I was always hoping that they would, uh, since I didn't die on camera, I never really died. I had slipped out of the car and I could come back and do another episode. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, going back to your question about when I write myself a part on Survivor's Remorse, I would write myself a part where I could recur. And, um, you know, it's hard to find great characters, and there's so many people out there fighting and trying to get the parts, so you're just happy to be part of something. So, you know, that, that again, was a show that people really, really loved, and it's, it's interesting, you know, given my career, to always see the different people that I run into on the street or at a baseball game or somewhere, uh, how they respond or, you know, what they know me from, whether it's Nickelodeon Guts or, you know, Yesty or Glee or or justified or, you know, it's just, it's just funny. It's great. Well, you know, best of luck going forward with survivors remorse. We can't okay. wait to see season two. I think that it's coming out in October, right? It's coming out actually August 22nd. We premiere oh, August. Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, and we're very, very proud of it. It's on stars. Please watch it. I think you can watch it on demand. Check us out on all those things that the young people are on. It's easy to binge too. It's it's uh, just six episodes. You could do it in a day. Yeah, and I and I and I think that if you know certainly for people who like uh, Shameless, I do think that you'll you'll see some of the influence that I had from writing on that show for four years has definitely gone into this show. But I think it's a very unique show, and it's a, but it's a show that has an incredible amount of heart to it too. And so uh, I think that just the actors are just tremendous, and um, and obviously I'm fond of the writing. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk. It's it's it's. It's so hard nowadays to get people to pay attention and, and try to differentiate yourself and call any attention that you can to the work that you're doing. I really do appreciate you taking time out to talk to me about it today. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. Have a great day. Thanks, man. Peace.